Yeah, a lot of people see like, you know, like vulnerability as being weak. And if you're weak, people won't follow you or you won't be able to like move through for what it takes. It's more powerful. Know. Yeah, it takes courage. Like it takes some huge balls to be able to get vulnerable. <laughs> Tegan Tyler, thanks for coming on to the show. What are the pros and cons of being a damn workaholic? <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. <laughs> Why? Jeez, uh, it starts. It starts with the people closest to you getting irritated, I suppose, would be one of the cons. And then the pros, uh, yourself. You love oh, being a workaholic myself. Yeah, you love <laughs> it. Like it just makes you feel good. Makes yeah. you feel like a man. Feeds into that masculine role that you can provide, and just for, for anyone that like has that un, unproven part of their self, it helps you to really drive that home to yourself that you you can you can prove that you can do something. Yeah, and what's the journey been like for you of like unraveling the whole workaholic things? You're like, hi, I'm Teague. I'm, I'm a workaholic. workaholic. <laughs> I'm Tyler, workaholic. I'm a workaholic. What's that sort of journey? Well, that's like? every one of our calls is related to that, isn't it? Like, <laughs> <laughs> in some sort of way. But yeah, I think uh, unraveling it's been interesting for me, especially like I've I've been able to really understand more and more and more. Every call we understand, we unpack another layer. And we, we go over it even more and it's like, it's like a whole new ride, but it's just another layer to the, to the exact same thing that we've been working on. But yeah, for me, it's helped me to like, well, for one, it's helped me to install boundaries. Mm. For one, like especially this year up to starting with you, I've been able to cut out weekends. And for me, like if, if yeah, for people that know me, that's, that's huge um, for me to actually not go in and, and book in work and, and try to push for it. So, which has helped me being able to realise what I've been missing out on and the things that I can actually um, start to develop in my own life, in like my personal life. So, that's been massive. But yeah, it's just been the, every layer that we've been able to unpack has made me realise more and more at how, how much I've been, not missing out on because I don't regret being a workaholic, <laughs> um, but just how much more there is. <laughs> To then like move into and what what makes me excited of future wise do you think that's helped you like step into leadership 100 percent. it's creating space which was like one of our first things on our topic of our call was was creating space and that's what i've been able to do i've been able to create space which allows me to think with a different um with a different view like look at things with a different view and allows me to um think clearly before responding to things and, and not respond out of um, from be- a point of being tired or a point of being um, overworked or anything like that. It allows me to respond from a place which actually truly resonates with where I'm going with that, that particular person or um, that role that I want that person to fill. What are your thoughts, Tyler? Well, same things. Mine, my cons probably, it's caused me sort of sickness and illness that I've created and like immune deficiencies in things that I never thought come from being a full workaholic. Like what? That's crazy. Like, yeah, I got diagnosed with like rheumatoid arthritis, which it actually wasn't in the end. They misdiagnosed me, but that's the cause of my inflammation I caused on myself of not same thing, probably coming back to my digestive system and eating and that around the right foods and training and always wanting to be the best in everything I did. So every time I trained and did everything, I'd do it to a full extreme as I still do pro- do with everything. But, yeah, caused myself sickness and then the ones around me saw that but I didn't see it of where it was stemming from. Um, and then that impacts them as well as how they view me. Like, and people telling you to slow down and you're like, well, this is what who I am and who I want to be. Um, and then same when we were going through it, like, and unpacking it. And once you say it and voice it, you actually realise where it comes from. Um, and it comes from those, like, the people you so-called look up to that are around you to think – that's what you need to be to get to where they they are now, um, even though you can do it on a different route and be more sustainable long term to get more success. Is that like from your dad or? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, stems from <laughs> him much straight away, and he still is in that trait. Like, um, as I mentioned to you yesterday, like I wrote him another letter to tell him to slow down, but in the same breath, that causes me a bit more work when he slows down. So I've got a, I've sort of done like a, do as I say, not as I do which is not a good role model on my side as well, but it's like I need to help him to get to where he wants to get to so then I can implement things into the business that I want to implement. So it's sort of I've got to 
kill two ducks with one stone and like do t- two things at once but sort of take my own like stuff in as well and actually do it myself so yeah, yeah. It's so hard isn't it that oh. that role of like it's projecting all of that stuff that you want everyone else to do but then you 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 got that you need to be accountable and you look at yourself and you're like and then you have that guilt trip come over. You're like, "Fuck, am I doing that? Am I doing that? <laughs> or do I need to do that? I need to do better." And then like, it, it forces you. Yeah, that's that's where that leadership part comes from. You're like, you're only that one step ahead of that next person. But as long as you stay that one step ahead, then you can implement that as that leadership act to the next person. But it's yeah. it's I struggle with the same thing. I struggle with the guilt of being like, "Fuck, am I doing that? Am I telling, am I telling someone to do something I'm not doing?" And then you get like this little, you get the sweats up. You're like, <laughs> well, it challenges your integrity, right? Yeah. And you're like, force a face and you're like, oh, god damn. I think facing it's, the, yeah, facing it is, being forced to face it is, is the part that I've been enjoying, being like, because you, you can be told all these things from outside noise and, but when, once you're actually facing it yourself and it's it's becoming a really rea- reality, like Tyler said, like when you're actually like speaking it yourself and it's becoming your part of your day, day-to-day routine, then that's when it actually kind of hits home and you realise it. Right, I need to step up. Mm, yeah, because there's like two different parts of like the comfort zone there, right? Sometimes the comfort zone is like getting into an ice bath or like even before <laughs> a shower, I was like, oh, damn, it's cold in Melbourne and this water, these pipes are cold. cold. Ah! Like there's a different like sort of comfort zone in getting out of that. And then also like facing something, telling someone to do something, showing up, pulling back a minute, trying to empower someone, having like a difficult conversation. Like they're all comfort zone things. Yeah, well. 100%. And, like, when you pull back, it's like you feel like you're giving less to your team and the people around you. So you're like, how can I do less? But I want them to do more to help me. But it's like, why am I telling them to do more for me to pull back? Like, I need to work harder than they are. Like, it's – and it's just – it becomes a spiral effect. Like, then you're working harder than them because you feel like you're letting them down when they're actually just – they're working not harder than you, but they're working harder than they have. So it's – yeah, and it's just the way – like, it's just your ego comes back straight away. Like – and you just can't like you're not you're leading from the front when you're working so hard because that's how you think everyone and it, it's got me to where it's got me today but it's like why <laughs> like that's the one thing i always come back to it's like well it's got me to here but like what's next and you always think about what's next like if i keep working this hard like like if i want something i'll go buy it or i'll work out how i can get it and like the first thing that comes to mind is oh, i'll just work harder and i'll get it but it's like yeah it just comes to like a thing of like why and what do you want out of life as well? Like 100%. Like you don't want to be, you want to live your life to a full extent, but you need to work hard to get there as well. Like there's always going to be hard work, groundwork put in, I reckon, as well. The life of balance, eh? Yeah. The, the hardest thing to master. Yeah. <laughs> balance, the hardest thing to master. Yeah, for sure. And I think there's a part there as well, like when you've got employees and stuff, where it's like, well, if you're working harder than them on stuff that they should be doing, then you're like preventing them the opportunity to work harder themselves, yeah. which is sort of like sacrificing because two people could do more work than you could yeah. if they were on fire, yeah. even though you know what to do. And then it d- prevents them from developing and learning and growing and empowering. Like, oh, no, nah, Tyler's got it. And there's yeah. just more pressure on you. Yeah. <laughs> it becomes, like becomes complacency, doesn't it? Like, it becomes like, oh, like, yeah, he's going to take over that, that role. Or t- oh, yeah, oh, yep. Yeah. Tyler always does that role. So, therefore, I don't need to. Yeah. It's that part of, like, this conversation we had recently about getting myself to take a step back and allowing people to, like, take up that role and fill up that role. Like, leave that space there for them. As much as I, le- I, much as I need to practice leaving space for me, I need to leave space for others, and be like, leave that space, let them realize that they need to do that, and then let them push themselves into it before I just go, oh, I'll just do it, I'll just do it, <laughs> <laughs> and just react, yeah, yeah just, just uncom- react, this void yeah. there that's like this needs to be filled, yeah. and I'm gonna be here so uncomfortable because it'll take me ten minutes. <laughs> goes, yeah. goes back, <laughs> it just goes back to that, the importance of like leaving space because if I don't have space myself and I'm just like in flow mode, I'm like go 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 go. Then if I go, all oh, right, actually I need to leave space because then to f- space for them, and then it, it all it all stems back to the same thing, doesn't it? So <laughs> it's crazy. Something I need to work on. Have you guys ever had like a burnout moment? I mean, no been hundred percent. Like, like burnout. yeah. Have you, have you got a story? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, I ended up I ended up crook for like uh, two to three weeks. I got um, chronic fatigue in 20, 2020. End of 2020. What does that look like? Were you just like working like 16 hour days or something? Like yeah. Yep. So this was when we were in lockdown. Um, I just started. So I started my business in February and lockdown happened um, in March. And all well, with COVID, 
trouble and that. And then, so I only had like a month of of to myself. And then obviously all the uncertainty, all the thing. And as as you know, like trade just blew up through through that period. Everyone was at home. They just they're like, oh, I'll just get this done. I'll just get this done. I'll just get this done. <laughs> And I was like, I was saying yes to everything. I'm just like, yep, 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 yep. I was like the hungry, hungry hippo. I'm like, yep, 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 I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And like, at, like I just started my business. It was just me. And I had all my mates around me who were like subbing to me and stuff. And they're just like, oh, yeah, they'll help me on a Saturday. They'll help me here. They'll help me there. And I'm, I'm there at like 8 o'clock on a Sunday night trying to screw off a roof that we just like smashed out in two days. And <laughs> this was like, it was getting obviously into December then. I was, it was hot. I was like push myself 10 to 12 to 14 hour days. Then I'd go home and I'd sit on the computer and bang stuff out. I had no, no time for myself kind of thing. And then um, it all got to – I think it got to the 24th, uh, like, yeah, Christmas Eve. And I was starting to like get a few headaches and that. I'm like, oh, I'll just go finish this. I'll just go finish a couple of these flashings on the roof. I'll just go and sort that out real quick. And then, like, had a dizzy moment, nearly fell off the roof, and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll just call it here. I'll, I'll, I'll finish this off and I'll go home. Went home, and then for the next three weeks, I was, I was like, dizzy, couldn't stand up without, like, almost fainting, like, in a chronic, like, like almost fetal position. Like, had body aches, pains, all kinds of stuff. It was just, it was cruel. It was cruel, and I just, everyone told me they're just like, because it, it was the COVID thing. Everyone's like, oh, I got COVID. Went and got, got the tests and all the bullshit. Nah, all good. No test. Don't know what it is. Maybe it's just a virus, stuff like that. And ultimately it's, yeah, it's come back to someone suggested like it's it's, it's fatigue. You, your levels are all, you've just depleted yourself. And <laughs> your body's shutting down. And I just I just refused to accept that that was, like I was, this comes back to ego. Like I'm free. I'm not that weak. Chronic fatigue can't affect me. And yeah. It w- I just I just refused it and then it was not until I got sick again, only like six or seven months later, that I really kind of realised that I needed to to take a step back, slow down and because actually like my partner, she um she's just like you need to like you need to realise what's happening and that was where I kind of learnt the hard way that, you know, we're we're a, we're a petrol tank, we've only got so much juice and that I can't just keep running on E the whole time. Burn the candle at both ends, everyone was telling me. <laughs> <laughs> you just didn't want to listen. <laughs> nah. Ego. I'm, I'm, I'm tough. I can do anything. And I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, parts of you that are, parts of you that's like, you know, yeah. there's a threshold there. Uh, I think that's um, interesting. What was like the dynamics with the relationship while you were going flat out? Was it putting a lot of stress and, pre- uh, stress and pressure on it? Or was she? Was that was like when we kind of were getting together. Um, but Tamsin is, she's a hairdresser, so she is a absolute workaholic as well. And that's <laughs> what, like, well, she, she's since taken a step back and started focusing on other things as well, which has, like, helped me to realise that that's something that I need in place in my life as well. But she is, um, that was what was so attractive to the two of us, I think, was the goat that, that we were both so super driven and that's what kind of brought us together, almost. And then we actually, like, we're dating for a couple of months and then we, we didn't talk to each other for like multiple months, maybe like four or five and then got back together again because of it kind of like we got too busy for each other <laughs> and, then up and then got back together again. And it was just like, so yeah, we did the whole round table thing and we realised that, that that is not feasible or, or like it's not going to work long term. So something that we both changed and in that time apart, I think it was the best thing for, for the both of us because we both realised that that wasn't, um, our our workaholic side was not going to serve us long term, so that's something that we both need. That's an identity that we both needed to, to get rid of, and then we're able to uh, obviously reconnect and go from there. Yeah, it's good because you can like support each other because you both know. Yeah, it. but yeah, it was an undoing. Hey, you're getting a little bit too much right now. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was definitely an undoing. Like, and that's something that we both like highlighted and realised, and then we we were obviously able to move through um, in the future. But yeah, there was a bit of. Ego from the both of us floating around. <laughs> so easy to yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> Me it comes back to you, yeah. like your employees. Yeah. You're like, I'll work harder than him. Like, oh, you you're like coming home. And you're like, how long do you work today? <laughs> it was such a comparison, and that was and that was the that was a conversation that we had. We're like, we're both just talking about business the whole time. We're not talking about like who we are, or who we want to be, and, and that kind of thing. And so that's what obviously what the undoing was. And 
time time wasn't wasn't there for <coughs> us. So, but yeah, it was it was a comparison over dinner every night of who was the best. <laughs> <laughs> it does, and it gets like a little bit toxic sometimes. Hey, it was. Like, yeah. And you like realize it, and you're like, oh man, we haven't like talked about anything else but business in a while. Business and money. Yeah. Yeah. And then next minute, you're like. <laughs> Wait, who are you again? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> who are you again? But yeah, when you get competitive like that, it's crazy. You don't know the middle name, but you know exactly how much they earn every year. <laughs> <laughs> every week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but yeah, that was, it was, if I, did, if, I've, if I haven't had these experiences, I wouldn't be able to to put the growth into what I've got now. So I definitely don't regret them. But yeah, that's definitely a story of mine that I've, I learned the hard way. Yeah. That, road, yeah. Of, road of excess leads to the palace of wisdom. 100%. For sure. Tyler. Yeah, same thing. As I said before, like I got that immune. They diagnosed me with like rheumatoid arthritis because of how much like swollen my joints were. I couldn't use my hands properly, couldn't hold power tools. How'd you get there though? What were you doing? Just the same thing, working, thought like take on as much work as I could through the business as well as on the side as well and like work, try work 15 hour days every day, seven days a week, not have a day off, but then still get home at eight o'clock, go train for two hours. Like eat, I was eating all right, but... um same thing, just you can only go as, and same thing, ego comes into it. It's like, oh, n- nothing can hurt me. Like, and then when I got diagnosed, I was like, oh, fuck, like I've finally got something. They've worked out what's wrong. Like, it's not, I didn't click. I was like, I've gave it to myself as an immune, like, disorder. Um, and I went on, I was on medication for two years and nothing still suppressed, like, it couldn't get suppressed by the medication. So, like, after two years of the drugs, like, I was on, like, I had to inject myself with stuff and all that kind of stuff. And I was just started feeling like real, sick more sick than i was and then i was like come to like a realization i was like i need a second opinion like and got another opinion like oh they've misdiagnosed you like abc and then like by then i'd sort of pull back work and once i come off all the medication everything just went away like it was nuts like to just think it was caused by internally literally like the stress i was putting my body under was just showing up like not emotionally but like through my joints and the swelling of everything of like not being able to operate properly, but I just took it as something else was wrong. Not you I worked s- too much. Were you so worried at the time? Like when all that was no, happening? not really. Like I was, but I was more frustrated that I couldn't get an answer mm. of like what was actually wrong. They just treated what they saw um, as the problem where obviously I needed more help. And same thing. I had people around me tell me, Oh, you're burning the can- candle at both ends. You're doing this, you're doing that. I'm like, well, I want to get this. I want to do this. Like, And it's hard when you do, like, see everyone around you work so hard as well um, to get what you want to get in life. You and feel like you're underperforming. Yeah, 100%. Maybe really you're overperforming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And you always feel like you're going to let yourself down as well. Like, you always go like, oh, what stone's not unturned that I can try work harder on? So, like, it's a thing to come back. And then now I've realised, I'm like, I need more balance. I can sometimes you do fall back into that trap because it's easy to fall back into old habits. But now I realise when I am. So, like, now that, yeah, it's there. So, I'm like, oh, I've just worked a freaking 14-hour day. Oh, that was stupid. Like, so you got to have your boundaries. And I'm still hard on my boundaries, like, trying to set them sometimes because of stuff you got to do. But it's just trying to have the boundaries in place. So, yeah. That's sort of what happened to me and it got pretty hectic for a while. Like went to hospital a couple of times with like, thought I was like having heart problems and that kind of jazz as well. Like if like pains in your chest. Yeah, pains in my oh, chest and my yeah. heart just beating and like it was probably more of an anxiety attack in the end. But like I'd just freak out because I was like something's going on. Like I need to what, de-stress. In, in your body? Yeah. yeah something's like, going on in my body. Like, yeah, like, something's going on. Like I need to, and I'd just go into a hospital bed and I'd just do all the checks and everything and nothing they'd be like oh nothing's wrong and then same thing i'd get frustrated i'm like well what's wrong like <laughs> but it, obviously once i worked out and like now i look back at it i'm like i just caused it like it was myself like from working too much and not giving yourself the time as you said like going out and doing the things you love like yeah you just don't give yourself your time of your day because yeah. no. you don't deserve it no you don't <laughs> yeah, that's time, what you right? think like, yeah, i yeah, don't 100%. deserve it you know what yeah. i mean i'm gonna keep working till i deserve something yeah yeah, yeah. it was interesting when i actually saw uh a naturopath and I got like blood live blood test analysis they did like my eyes test they did like nails test they did like a bioresonance scan and it's all like oh your cortisol's just up really high then I had my blood test done and like all of my like hormones and stuff were good but all the conversion patterns and the hormones what they turned were like bad and they're like stress I'm like wow instead of going to see a doctor like just go and get your blood test and other things it's like stress and you don't want to face it like i didn't want to go and have a look to be yeah. like <laughs> like oh you're actually like you're running on a lot of cortisol I'm like, oh, yeah god damn 
But I want to know, like, from you guys specifically, where do you think that stress and pressure comes from? Everyone around you. Like, the industry, I was saying the Teague the other day, we will chat, and, like, the trade industry is, I, I perceive it as one of the unhealthiest industries in the world. Like, it's just so, it's not toxic, but, like... But it's toxic? No. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it is. It's toxic? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's toxic. toxic, but it's toxic. It's toxic, <laughs> like, it's... There's relationships less toxic than that. Yeah, <laughs> 100%. Like, <laughs> there's, like... <laughs> It is. <laughs> that's, that's true. <laughs> but, but yeah, it's like you come like the fact of like you got to work hard in it and the work is hard. Like it's physical work and mental work once you get like sort of up and you're running your own business. But it's like you wake up in the morning, go to the servo, get a meat pie, get a V and that's your breakfast and then you don't eat till one o'clock. Like there's no like and I believe nutrition's a pretty big thing in like the lifestyle side of things to make your body thrive because – like if you're not, it's like like I call it like a fire. Um, like if you don't stoke the fire with the right wood, it goes out. So it's like if you're not fueling yourself, you can't operate at your best optimal self. So it's like a thing of like, yeah, it's just so like just like yuck in a way. Like it's like people, you know, as I said to you before, like you just want to shake them and like let them wake up. Like, And I, I get myself in that hole sometimes of like trying to help people too much of like this is what you need to do um because i do it like <laughs> of like just listen to me like i'll help you be your best optimal self but they don't like and they don't care because it's like just the way the whole industry and that it is of what people perceive as hard work yeah. like if you're not working hard in the industry you're not good pretty much yeah. i like it how you also like want to set the standard for all tradies as well yeah yeah, yeah i love it, it. C- comes back to like a yeah, part of my purpose obviously like and like i just want to be impactful in like we can work hard and sometimes you got to um, but be more balanced and understand what you want to be able to thrive as well. Like some people just think, oh, I need to work hard to be successful. But do you love it? Like as we both say, we're both workaholics. But like I actually genuinely, people don't believe me sometimes. Like I actually fucking love what I do. <laughs> yeah, like I'm passionate about it. Like I actually like like it. And everyone's like, how? I'm like, I, I don't know, but I just like love it. I feel comfortable. I like it. It's me. Like might have been the way I was brought up, but it's like, I don't know. It's just like I'm, I'm health, like not healthy relationship with it, but I just enjoy it. Where people, most people come to work and they're like, "Oh fuck this today!" Like, oh, I hate their job. That yeah. nothing fries me more. I'm just like, you don't want to be here, don't be here. Yeah. Like, yeah. That that is my that's one of my pet hates as well. Like, I think Tyler hit the nail on the head. I think before we go into like the pressure side of it all, it's it all stems from like people not showing up in the mornings. So like they'll they'll want it. You got to be on site at seven, right? But you may have to travel 45, 50 minutes to the job site in the morning to be there at seven. So you've got people getting out of bed at the latest possible point because they're going to bed at 10, 11, 12 o'clock at night because they want to stay and watch their favorite TV show. And then, so they they they're already they're already behind the eight ball in the morning. They don't get a nutritional breakfast. They don't even they don't have three seconds for themselves in the morning because they're rushing to get out of the house because they know they've got to sit in traffic to get to their job site to lay some concrete. Or whatever it is that their task that they're they're doing for the, for the day, then they only have half an hour if you're lucky for lunch breaks. Like I no, I'm not a single person I know in the trade industry does more like doesn't has an hour lunch break. Everyone is as quick as possible. Sometimes twenty five minutes, thirty minutes max if you're lucky. And we, my team and I, are guilty for it, but we love what we do, so we're just like we just roll on to the next thing, and then you're expected to work. If the job's not going right, you're, you're expected to be there. You don't just go, you don't just like close your computer, oh, yeah, sweet, now it's 3 o'clock, I'm, I'm out of here, my hours are done. If the job's not finished, guess what? The expectation is you stay and you finish it. So you, you've got people running on low fuel, they haven't, they haven't done anything for themselves all day and they're expected to, to stay and put like break their back on a job which they're only paid to be there for. Like that's not they don't have any emotional connection to that job. It's not, but the boss is like, yeah, just stay there and finish that up because it's an expectation. And so, it's, and that's in in my opinion a very like toxic way to to, to live your life. Yeah. It's a culture that needs to be broken, hey. Which is good that 100%. like you guys are coming in to yeah. to break that shit. Hundred percent. That's something I work on with my team a lot. We work on if there's. If there's an op- opportunity to go and get breakfast at the cafe and sit down, we take it every time. And 
my partner says to me all the time, she's like, oh, you do is go have coffee and breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but for three hours of that from from 7.30 till 10, like my team is like bang, 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 bang. Like everyone is just on. <laughs> everyone knows that if we, if we can condense that seven-hour day into three hours because everyone's willing to like go as hard as possible to achieve a result so that we can relax <laughs> and we can chill out. And it's not all the time. Like there's obviously... As, as you get busier, there's, there's jobs that need to be done. But everyone's, everyone's happy to do so because of the culture that you, or the environment that you're providing for them. Mm. And people are, people are confident that that is not a full-time thing. They're not going to be slave-driven full-time. And I, I work really hard on like language that I, provo- that I speak to my guys with. And I go, so what do you want to do? Like we've got this job coming up. Do you want to like, go to that now or do you want to me to rebook it? Or like, how are you feeling? Like, oh, no, no, I'll, I'll go to it now. They always jump at the opportunity because they know that that job needs to be done regardless. Or, But you just you, it's the way that you <coughs> communicate that with them. Let's give them the opportunity. See how they feel. Yeah. If, if they're not feeling the best for the day and they communicate that back to me, then that's perfect because then I'm not instilling that poor, like I'm not asking them to do overtime or asking them to go to another job when they're not really feeling up to it. Yeah, it's putting the human back in because there's that, this could be moments where they've like the literally this person's just gone through a breakup or something. Like, hey man, do you want to do something? Like, well, they've got problems or like yeah. my guys will say to me like, one of my, a member of my team said to me the other day, he's just like, oh hey man, I just need to be home by this time for for basketball for the boys. I'm like, yes, yeah, sweet. But the Friday before that, a job went wrong and he wasn't able to get home to his family. But he didn't. He he wasn't upset about it. He just he just he rang his partner and said, hey hey babe, sorry I can't can't make it. You know this thing's gone wrong. He was there at the factory when I got there at six thirty at night. And he's just like, oh, hey, mate, sorry about the job. I'm like, what are you doing here? Go home. <laughs> he's just like, oh, no, nah, by the time I got to traffic and that, I'd rather just get, get a jump on, on next week. I'm, I was going to clean the van out and this and that. But like, but that's, you know, do you know what I mean? It's, he wasn't pissed off that he was there. He wasn't angry or upset he was there. Um, so, and then the next time, you know, the job went right and he was able to get, get home. And, but he, and, but he all voiced, that opinion, voiced that to me. So he made sure that he only had X amount of jobs per day so that he could get home and that he could see his family. Does that make you and feel proud? Yeah, it does. Yeah. It's it's like it's not, it's not something I'm doing for me. It's what, what I want to do for them. Like I want to make sure that he has the ability to to do those things with his family and be able to because he's got a young family and that's that's like he, he I'm not gonna be the dividing factor that he misses out because I'm where he gets a source of income from doesn't mean that I own him. Like that's his family that he needs to go and see. So that's I think that's just something that a lot of people could be more open to. That, um, and it, I think, I don't think, I think the next generation of tradesmen that that's going to become more and more readily hope, available. Yeah. I hope it's coming in because too. it's just that next demographic of trade where, or that next generation of trade, sorry, where they're just set in their ways of of hard work and and that's just always been a thing. So therefore, that's what. They instill on their employees, so I hope it's coming. But that's that's just an example of like of what I would, if if the if the environment I'm trying to trying to put out there for trade. But yeah, it's not always like that, and I'm sure there's a few people that can testament to that. But yeah, it's <laughs> it's that's something that Tyra and I discuss regularly. Like that that'd be that's the ideal scenario in life. But yeah, it's it's definitely not that way. Mm. Hence the toxic toxicity of. Um, of trade should come in there well, where do you guys think like your own stress and pressure come from like to succeed myself to oh straight from like from yeah. I'm just gonna check this camera we'll be back in a second but yeah. please continue Tyler. yeah just from myself like 100% like you put the pressure on yourself and stem it to yourself for it probably becomes to ego as well as like what people perceive you as so like if I'm known as a hard worker and a <laughs> successful business person I feel good. My ego feels good. <laughs> like, and it gets me what I want. Like, it's it's a compliment you look for sometimes, which is bad because it's like, oh, well, that's me. Like, that's who I am. Like, and it's bad to say, but yeah, that's where, and like, I literally, I find most of the pressure I put on myself, like, and if I talk to the team around me at work and that, I'm like stressing about something. Like, Sometimes, because obviously everyone's different, but like I'll talk to my dad, for example, and we probably do it to each other, like because we're sort of the main two leaders. But he'll go, "Oh, why are you so stressed about it?" But then when he's stressed, I'll do the same to him. 
like because we stress about probably little things like mm. that's actually not an issue so you got to reinsure it re- reinsure each other that it's okay um but yeah i definitely put all the pressure on myself like 100 percent every time is that for you like for money for success like i think it's just my expectation of what i know i'm capable of so like i know what i can give so i'm like well i have to do abc like if i right, go in the morning and i go into like my notion and i look at like all my to-do lists for the day I go, all right, I've got to do this. And then if I get to the end of the day and I've got one thing left to do, I'll just do it. <laughs> so I come in in the morning and I've got a fresh to-do list, like, which is good, but like, because otherwise I'll leave that thing to tomorrow and then tomorrow's list will be there of like stuff I've got to sort out and that thing will just get pushed away again. So like you perceive and put that pressure on yourself to be able to work to your highest self, but then same thing, it comes back. Like that extra hour that task took me. I should have had it done in the day, but sometimes you can't. Like, so then you get that work, the same thing, comes back to that trait. Mm. Fall back into your own self. Yeah, and then, like, for you, of being, like, really wanting, like, like, wh- like, why do you want success? Well, it's not, I wouldn't say want success. I just want to be able to provide for my family and, like, myself as well of the lifestyle I want to live. Mm-hmm. So, and with that, obviously, comes, like, success in a way, I would say. Like, yeah, because so monetary is just a byproduct, like, really... As you were saying yesterday, like it's, it's a spiritual thing. It comes in, it goes out. Like it gets you what you want, but like materialistic things can only make you so happy. So, like the success, like I don't value success by money. And say, like obviously, it can get you cool shit and do get you things you want to do and buy buy your time and freedom. But I like sort of value success on like how happy people are in a way. Like look at people like. If they're the happy, environment you're creating, yeah, 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 yeah like yeah. look at what's yeah. around them, the community, like you, for example, like the community you've created, probably makes you happy and makes you like emotionally available. Like, it's not the money can get you more success, but there's no limit on, like, yeah. So I look at it as more the community and how happy someone actually is. Like, you don't have to have a hundred friends, you can have a couple close friends to you, like, and be happy with what you've got, but you just got to be able to enjoy it. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah, I like that. And I, I do think as well, part of it is like if you work, like if you are working smart and you are creating success for yourself and others and the monetary is a byproduct of that, it's like you can actually enjoy it as well. Yeah. 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 Unless you buy a brand new car like yours, you're like, yeah. <laughs> and so then the feeling lasts for three seconds. <laughs> yeah. You drive it out of the dealership and you're like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, I love my cars. And that, like every time I come home and open the garage, I'm just like, yeah. Like as in like, it's that little dopamine hit of like, I've done, I've succeeded, I've, I've been able to buy that. Oh, that's my goal. I've got, I've, I've been lucky to buy myself my dream cars and um, every time I, I roll in and open my garage, it's that, yeah, it's that dopamine hit of like, of, of that goal achieved, ticking that off the list and being able to see it there every time. I love that stuff. It makes it real. Oh, 100%. What it, it does is, um, this is like a bit of Frederick Nietzsche stuff, is it confirms your beliefs about yourself. And that's like the best feeling ever. Yeah. Like I believe these things about myself. And if I'm at my full self, like a higher self, this is what it looks like. And if I've got this, it confirms that, yep, I'm me. And I was right about my predictions of myself. It's funny because everyone, everyone runs that materialistic. I think the word materialistic is overused in my opinion. Like, um, like I think having materialistic things is perfectly fine if they serve you. Like if they're there for you. If it's a, if it's a flex thing. Like it took me months and months and months to post about my what i had in like the cars i had why it, it's not it's not a flex thing for me like it's not and it's it's only been re, been recent where they've actually came um where they've actually made it been um that's what i'm looking for made an appearance on my socials or anything like that because i don't want to i don't want to make it out there that i'm like they i am materialistic or that i am flexing something but it's something that i actually enjoy and this is something that you challenged me to do was to be seen. Like, be that person. Don't don't hide it. Don't don't be <laughs> here and just be like, oh yeah, I just I just got a little business and like, yeah, it's sweet. Like, like be that person. And like re- regardless of what people's like opinion of you is, is irrelevant. It's just that's the person that you are. Be that person and let life be. Yeah. So. Well, I think you owe it to everyone who's out there looking for inspiration or like that have similar goals to you and if you're ticking them off and you're living a life that's like actual fucking like my life like you owe that to show the rest of the world like hey you can have it it took me so i i, I recently bought a 
a new work vehicle, I post it and I, I put a little spiel up. It was only very brief, but um, just testimony to the last few few years and the work that's been put in and how happy I am with myself and, and what's been what's been done. And it took me so long. And Tamsin, Tamsin was like, she's like, you have to post this, you have to post this, you have to post this. She was like into me hard. She's pretty much the only reason I posted it. But, you know, it blew up and I got a lot of messages and like a lot of a lot of beautiful people from our, our hometown and stuff were were like congratulating me and things like that and it was so hard to receive. I didn't reply to majority of the messages for like two weeks because I just didn't know how to receive it. I didn't know how to like I didn't know how to like make that um like part of my identity. It was so hard for me to receive that that congratulations from from outside people, from from not my inner sanctum, my inner circle. How'd that make you feel, man? That whole It was amazing. I felt I felt amazing, but it was just so hard to process. It took took me over two weeks to like mentally process and, and come to terms with what's happened and and that I've you know I've put myself in a position a very good position and and to have that recognition I suppose for it it was super difficult <sighs> super difficult so back powerful to <laughs> yeah <that's> so cool <laughs> so what is like the stress and pressure like where does that come from for you stress to and pressure succeed have money it's all self perceived there's there's absolutely no no pressure from from anyone around me that that puts it on me where it come from? It's it's all self. I I put it all over myself. I think maybe as I was a child, I didn't really apply myself as as well as I could. And I don't know about you, you, but like every parent teacher interview was Teague doesn't apply himself. Teague doesn't apply himself. Teague doesn't apply himself. Teague, <laughs> Teague could be better. Listen. Teague can be this. He's a class clown. He's this. He's this. He's this. He's this. And like you're so used to hearing that negative um, communication about yourself that it's. You start to adopt it like that. Obviously, your brain's developing. Um, when you're hearing that stuff, and they're talking to your parents who are like your, you know, they're your idols. They're the people that you want to impress the most when you're a child because that's all that you care about. That's all that that's in your life. Um, so that's what you want to, you know, they're the people that you want to impress the most. And all they're getting is negative feedback. Like it, it obviously takes a toll long term in the like in the development of the way that you portray yourself, the way that you hold yourself, and I suppose. I suppose that I put the pressure on myself, not so much for my parents directly, but for the people around me that I can be better than what I think I am. And I can always do better than what I think I can. And I suppose that's where like a lot of that, it, it, like it, it's taken me a long time to get to realise all of this and, and for the penny to drop, I suppose, as per se. But from from my recent years, I've just been, there's like a bullet to gate, been going for it. And I suppose that's where it all comes from. I suppose it's it's deep down in the childhood, as most things are. But I think that's where it all comes from. It all comes from myself and the, what I want to do and what I want to show the people around me and the light that I hold myself in as opposed to what what anyone else does. Yeah, I love that so much. And, yeah, it hits home. I also want to know um, specifically, I had this question. It was in my head and now it's gone, but it'll come back in a second. It'll be really good. So, uh, here we go. Where do you think people go wrong? In just in terms of their process to make it somewhere, get somewhere. Like, what are the mistakes you think that people go wrong in? They give up when it gets too hard. Like, as we went through with the journey of everything of like me trying to perceive and live up to my mum and dad's standards of a family business, which is a lot of pressure on me, and slowly stepping up now, but. It's like when it got too hard and I had to have the hard t- chats with the family, it's like, I'm not, I don't want to do this anymore. Like that was my first instinct. It was straight away. We'd jump on a Zoom call and I'd be like, well, I'm not doing this anymore. Let's go a different route. <laughs> yeah. And then you'd put the heat on me. But it's like, yeah, once it, like, it's going to get hard. Like you've got to work hard and then you've got to work on yourself as well. Like I believe, like I wouldn't be where I am today. I'd probably still be like just working on the tools, going with the flow, the motion of the business, um and all that kind of jazz so like it yeah, you got to just people you got to get through the hard times like it's going to get hard you're not going to have money in the bank account it's not going to be working you're not going to have this like especially this like instagram's the w- one of the worst things it's good and it's bad it's got its pros and cons but like you see people at the top or you see people everyone po- it's a highlight reel, reel. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah it's a highlight reel like you don't post when you're crying you don't post when you're upset. You don't post when you're bad day. You don't post when you split up with your missus if you're going through a divorce. Like, it's like 
it's a highlight reel. So people, all they see is the shiny things like of like, oh, I want what he's got. Like as Teague said, when he posts a photo of his car, he's first thing when he's posted, he goes, oh, all these people are going to perceive me of now. I've got this. They they think, oh, oh he's so-and-so. Like your ego as soon as it kicks in. So yeah, I reckon it comes down to people just don't want to do the hard work as much as they think anymore. Like the, as much as like the industry and the world's sort of toxic, people are like wrapped in cotton wool these days as well. Yeah. I think a part of that as well was like there's a difference between like, um, you know, there's multiple facets of hard work. And as yeah. you mentioned beforehand, like there's hard works where you're like, well, I don't want to go through this anymore. Yeah. Like maybe I want to do something else. Yeah. Or maybe there's this other thing. Or maybe mm. like, you know, um, it's going to be hard for me to actually let go of some of this and trust someone else and, and embody someone else or like, no, so empower someone else to do something. Yeah. And that's like, that's come down to some of the hard work because it's yeah. like, fuck. <coughs> I don't do this all myself. The only person I trust is me. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's it. when you try like get other people to ha- asking for help is fucking hard. <laughs> like, and sometimes you need help. It's to the ego crush, isn't it? Yeah, it's like it's asking ego. for help is the hardest thing you can possibly do. <laughs> yeah. Like as a as a young man, that's that's what me I struggle with the most. Asking for help. I am like I've, I I roll that I've got this mentality twenty four seven. And it's it's my undoing at t- at times. Like it's it's what makes me who I am, but it's also my undoing. It's the it's the most counterproductive thing that I do. Like I just go, no, nah, I'm sweet. I got this. And like I'm sitting there staring at my computer with a list of eighty four thousand things to do, and I'm just like, fuck, I don't have this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I adopted. I'm just like, oh well, I adopted this, so here I am. Like, eh, I'm just into it. But that's asking for asking is the hardest thing to do, and it is it is ego dissolving. <laughs> Which is the hard work, right? <laughs> Which is the hard work. That's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually physically asking, saying, "Hey, mate, can you help me?" is the easiest part. Like, that's, that's like we all know that how easy that is. But doing it, actually, like going to yourself, admitting to yourself that fuck, maybe I don't actually have this. Have you got any stories? Oh, geez, no, I've top of my head. Um, there's, so, there's, there's a lot. I, I'm so headstrong, and I like, I roll. Funny, funny. This is not direct, but funny thing, like. Tamsin will tell me something. She'll be like, oh, you should you should like start to think this way. You should start to do this. And like, I'm a, I'm a sit and stew kind of guy. Like it takes me like a month to like process things. And like, it would be a month later, we're sitting there for dinner, we're having a conversation. I'm just like, oh, I'm just going to start doing this. And she's just like, do you know I tell you to do that to m- a month ago? <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, but yeah, I've heard of it from a couple of people now. And I only think I'm going to start adopting it. And I'm like, <laughs> That's so, so, so not, not directly asking for help but i don't receive it well mm. which i think comes from because i don't ask for it because i don't ask for it i don't receive it and then like it takes me a long time to pr- for me to actually process and be like Fuck, maybe they actually might help me maybe they actually might be beneficial for what i'm trying to do or what i'm trying to achieve so not not a direct not directly of me asking someone but yeah it, it, it's definitely showing up and the more aware i'm becoming of myself the more i'm realizing and and I did we did vo- I did voice that to her I did say look I'm I'm so sorry but you are the leader you are you are the forefront of these ideas just know that I'm thick and it <laughs> takes a while to sink in yeah. you actually like uh, filter though that's like a benefit though you know you're not making like a decision without sort of thinking it yeah I don't I don't ju- I actually geez I shouldn't say that I'm so I'm super impulsive but like <laughs> with with stuff like that yeah I, I do it does take a lot a while for me to I've got to see. I'm a very visual person. I've got to see the change. I've got to see how that would be, be beneficial. Um, and when I'm not obviously physically seeing it or it's not um, a factor in my life, then it's not something I'm going to just adopt. But, yeah, ultimately she is always right. <laughs> and I do always need that help. But I don't I don't receive it well and I definitely do not ask for it. Do you struggle to say, like, to say thank you to people when someone gives you a compliment? Yeah, I, don't, I, I break eye contact and I can't, like... <laughs> Like I'm shit ass, <laughs> absolute shit ass at it. It is, but I hate hearing it. Like, Why? like I said, like I said, it took me two weeks to like get back to those comments. But like, it's just so hard for me to like. It's not something that's that's obviously been, um, that I've heard a lot of, or it's been been at the forefront of. And, um, well, sorry, I, that's that's a lot. I have heard it a lot, especially like after you know I've gone through what I've been through, and then. You know, I've come out the other side and I'm, I'm on my upwards tra- trajectory and then like I receive a lot of it, but I don't actually, I don't let it sink in. Mm. And that's where like so only in the last, sorry, three to four months where we've been working together and I've becoming more aware of those things is where I've actually started to like 
feel that and 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 bring it in and it's like it's it's taking off that suit of armor that i've gotten and, and allowing that stuff to actually like hit home and getting in getting out of this warrior mode that i'm in all of the time and allowing that lover to to sneak in a bit more and and feel that kind of energy yes, so you can show up as more of a leader so much as, and it takes that softer approach which tamsin helps me every day with she's like i need you to be softer i need you to be softer and she's so patient with me because I'm such a dick. <laughs> like, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm such a dick and she's so, so, so patient with me. But she's just like, she's like, I need you to be softer. I need you to be softer. You're being, you're being hard here. I need you to be soft. And, and she helps me every day. But, yeah, it's, it's definitely where um, that softer side of me is not as present as I would like it to be. But, yeah, it's something I work on every day. Well, I think there's a part of there is like it's because you're getting seen in your power. And then when you're seen in your power, you now have responsibility. And then sometimes it's like, well, shit, the success and everything that I want comes with this responsibility. And that responsibility is like a lot to bear. Yeah, abs- absolutely. It's Once again, it comes down to perceived pressure. Like you put that pressure onto yourself that you need to hi- hold this standard, this set standard, and you can't be vulnerable because what if someone sees you not at that standard? Yeah when you need to be able to to flow between the two to the two levels and that's what's going to make you that better person yeah. as opposed to just sitting at one and making yourself out like you're King Kong and nothing can hurt you. <laughs> and just just being able to just... Yeah, literally. <laughs> sometimes I just want to get on the balcony in my factory and beat my chest. But, <laughs> but I need to obviously then just relax, take deep breath and get into that flow state. But that's something that's hard that I struggle with. With whatever's coming up. And it's crazy because I've seen it in terms of leadership. It's like when you do and you ask properly and it's like the hardest thing ever in terms of like the ego dissolving thing you're talking about beforehand. It's like all these amazing things happen. Is that something you see in the trade industry? Like oh, big time. Like vulnerability is not. Oh, big time. It's a very ego driven industry. And yeah. there's, there's a lot of like. And not in like an ego way either in terms of like, ooh, I'm here. Mm, mm, mm. Like, I'm yeah, the best yeah, whatever yeah, it is. It's yeah. just like. Like I know, I know it all. Mm. Le- yeah. Like first yeah. thing I saw, always like had a huge, I was, like real passionate about it. Actually, especially with you guys, trade it's like a huge thank you guys for like leading the way and doing the work. Because I worked a lot of, um, I worked for a few years as a trader with my dad, yep. and he was like the worst. And then Pooch, he was the absolute worst. Like he's so emotional. He's like the most emotional person I've ever met, and he's an absolute sweetheart. So whenever we're hanging out together and stuff, I'm just like, oh, he's such a love bug. As soon as it comes to the work. No emotions. Just bang. everything's on there. Be five steps ahead of me. Like <laughs> everything that you're doing, otherwise fuck off. Like that's how he sort of goes at work, and he's he actually goes to know. And the same thing with like all these employees and stuff, and how like they will hang out and sort of how he would treat them and had these huge expectations. And it took him like thirty years to slowly start to to dissolve that. And it's a it, tough it's, love mentality, yeah, isn't it? It's crazy yeah. seeing how you guys are dissolving it now, and and he's only dissolving it now, and he's like in his mid fifties. He's like fifty six, fifty seven. He's only like just just dissolving it now and he's put himself into a position because i've been telling him for so long after learning all leadership stuff but it took me a while to gain my dad's trust with things now he rings me up what do i do what do i do how do i have this conversation what happens here so like i've got a lot of experience with us on day with that aging i'm like oh this is really cool um but it was all just for him specifically like empowering other people so he didn't manage because he was too emotionally connected to the people it had his high pressure on them and he'd have all these favors that he was doing for him made up in his own head didn't know that they didn't value any of them so when they were like upset or didn't perform or would want to leave he's like oh you're fucking leaving me and he'd get really shitty and like real attached to those things. Um, so ego showed up in that way in terms of like, you know, I'm doing favors for you. Um, you should be doing favors back for me. And I'm like, dad, they don't value any of those favors. Like they do want a long, longer lunch break. <gasps> some, yeah. some of the 16 year olds want to start a little bit later. Like you're in a workshop, in a workshop, dad, let the 16 year old start a little bit later. They're up game until like 11 PM, like at night. Yeah. Time. Adapting. I think adapting to the, to, the different personalities that come through when it's just it's like it's, this is the blank rule everyone adhere to it i suppose that's what creates that um that friction in the workplace yeah it's crazy and i've seen it heaps with all tradies and then as soon as dad started getting a little bit more vulnerable with his employees and stuff like oh like this is stressing me out i want to have this thing done here and like for these reasons and like this makes me angry and frustrated and like how these things happen like now he's like talking me he's like dude I, he's like i i don't do any management now all the management sort out he's like i'm just helping the apprentices and I'm having like a wild time out there. And it's like, it's so fun. And I'm like, wow, really? It's like, yeah. Just comes back to like ego driven, isn't it? Like it's the whole industry and like everything we always say, like it's just ego of like, and as Teague said, it's like a perceived, like it's our way or no way. 
Like, and everyone seems <laughs> yeah. to know. Like, it's that's how everyone's like, the it, best version of themselves. Everyone's yeah. the be- I'm the best chippy. I'm the best builder. I'm the, I'm the best concrete. I'm the best plumber. Like, everyone's the best in their yeah. own industry. Yeah, no one wants to help each other. Like, and that's where the space is probably, I reckon, over the last few years, I don't know about Teague, but like the mental health side of things has probably helped that, I reckon, as well, because people are like actually suffering from it. Like, and, and they're probably voicing it more now in the industry, which the is stigmas, pretty cool. The stigma is yeah. dropping. Yeah, dropping. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, like, then yeah. people are noticing, oh, why are they getting mental health issues? It's like, oh, well, they're working, they're burning out. Like, that's all. People are burning out and they've got no outs. They're working seven days a week because that's all they know. Um, and then it gets to a stage where they do need help and they need to reach out. So, that, like, that part that's come into the industry now, like the stigma dropping finally, is something that it can lead on with of, like, you still have to work hard and put work in here and there, but be able to be a bit more... Voice what you want as well, not just feel like you come into a workforce or a workshop, like you said with your dad and like Teague said, like where you just got to this way or no way or get the fuck out. Like everyone's got to be a bit more lenient. It's fucking hard to do when like your business has been doing it for the last 30 years <laughs> to change <laughs> it overnight. Like and it comes after like the thing of patience, like it's a, not a world, like the world we're in now is not a world of patience. Like it's just everyone wants everything tomorrow yesterday i should say um yeah so it's hard like to adapt with what the industry is going as well it's crazy because i think like a lot that's why i think some of all this personal work is like so valuable especially for the people who like don't know the language or the lingo or how to like even think about things they're just like i'm stressed out i don't know what to do yeah. and i'll just put my stress back into working or bottling it down whatever next person blows up and goes, ah. yeah so what do you think what do you think some of the things for you guys specifically that have you've worked on yourself or learnt that have really sort of change things for you and how you show up communication for me would be a big one of just not the big thing i do now is leave a void like if i'm having a combo with someone and they're not looking at me or not responding or like i'll ask a question and if they don't answer me within a second i'll keep talking so like but now like i'll literally ask a question and i'll just sit there and just look at them and they just like obviously get awkward or like they'll make <laughs> eye contact with me then. Like, so that's a big thing I've communicated as well. Cause I'm sort of like in like the leadership role I'm in, I'm pretty calm, like in a way, like I communicate in that, but yeah, I never used to, I'd always just be go, 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 like do this, do this, do this, do this. And I've said in about three seconds thinking they should understand what I've said inside and out and be 10 steps in front of me. So yeah, like slowing down my communication and, and, making it more understandable to what they should, like how they should work. And like I even ask the boys, I'm like, well, how do you learn? Like do you need to write stuff down? Do you need to see it visually? Do you need me to communicate it? Like so everyone's different. Like I'm a visual learner. Like if you communicate something to me, as Teague said, like I'll have to stew on it for weeks. Like and be like, what were they on about? Like and then I'll visually see a plan or something. I'm like, oh, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, like, or they'll draw yeah, the literally. ugliest like sketch of something. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. But if they told me that, I'd be like, oh, I don't know what you're on about. Even though the picture's <laughs> the worst picture in the world. But it's like, yeah. So I'm like a massive visual learner. But it's understanding everyone's so different. Like some people have to write notes. Like, and that's where like our workforce sort of got better. Like, but some, then it comes back to the thing of like people's ego. Because like, say someone's, likes writing notes they'll be like oh you got a notebook you're a dickhead like it's like well mate that's how he learns like but people don't it's other someone else that's someone else's insecurity John. yeah because like, yeah. they're like fuck, maybe i should be taking notes because i don't know what the fuck they're talking about in this meeting <laughs> yeah and then yeah. he just sees someone else with a notepad yeah and he's just like oh, 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 oh i'll just make fun of them yeah because they yeah. just they feel like they feel embarrassed they're like fuck maybe i should be taking notes because i'm a knobhead but like people don't have that recognition of themselves no nah, correct they just yeah. be like oh Maybe I should do better and maybe I should bring a notepad to the next meeting. Instead, they just project that embarrassment onto someone else. Here's, 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 a, here's a big question in terms of that. Where have you projected stuff onto other people? I'm the I, I'm a bottle up man and I'm the worst. I take it all home with me. Oh, do you? Yeah. yeah. I'm the worst. I'm, I'm so good at work and so good at communicating. But I bottle up and take it home. There's been times where like I've just sat at the factory just like stare at the computer just like processing the day and... and they're probably the days where it works the best, but when they don't, um, unfortunately, my beautiful partner she cops, <laughs> she cops it, and she know we've we've been able to to communicate that, and that's something I work on for, like hard, but it's definitely stuff that I take home. Like last fortnight for us has been quite, um, quite busy at work, and and then stress has been t- stress or t- being tired has been taken home, and um, yeah, it's definitely something I need to work better on. But that's that's 
probably my biggest issue right now is I, I bottle it up and I don't I don't, don't give myself the time and space to let it all out. So, like, with being super busy at the moment, I haven't been able to, like, sneak in and get to the gym in the morning. And I'll, I've been trying to, like, instead of getting... I've got the gym at my factory and instead of doing that, I'll, I'll get up, on the, I'll just go on the computer and I'll start doing some invoices or, or some quotes that I, sh- I should have done the night before but I didn't, X, Y, Z. And I don't have any any me time. There's no TIG time. So I take all that all that pent up energy and stress. Remember the conversation we were having about my energy levels? And um, I take all that home with me and I just, instead of letting it out in the way that I want to, I let it out with all the stress built up behind it. And um, yeah, that's so that's something that, is definitely my biggest flaw at the moment. Well, Thames sounds like an absolute battler. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know she doesn't kick me out of the house yet. We've only, been to, we've only been in the house for two weeks with each other and she's been copping it the whole two weeks. So. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a trooper. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to moving in with Teague. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to me. <laughs> it was funny, actually. When it was some, some, blah, 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 we had some dinner with some friends last night and they're just like, Oh, how's how's it going living with each other? You're working out the quirks, and I'm like, oh no, Tams is Tams is straight up and down. I knew exactly what I was getting myself into. She's like, geez, I'm learning some stuff about tea, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. what he brings home and what he doesn't, <laughs> and, uh, and mm. how organised he is and how organised he isn't. And <laughs> mm. <laughs> she's like, I've never met someone that's so organised and so unorganised, and they just smack it all together. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's definitely um, that's definitely something that I need to need to be, get better at but it's it's the forever learning game of of dealing with each each stress ball as it comes gets thrown at you well so it's the modern world right at the moment yeah literally. that's what like you're learning all the skills and then personal growing like personally growing for those exact reasons so that you can manage and navigate those things because i believe the whole moving out thing all the rest of that having high performance jobs working together is literally just like ironing out the kinks when you have kids because it's like how the hell are you going to have a kid now with all this stuff we have that conversation all the time. Right, like man. How can you do it? But that's yeah. like the whole reason you're in here. It's like, okay, now we actually have to figure these out intentionally instead of putting them to the side. Like, okay, I'm so unorganized and disorganized when I get home. She's like, cool, well, we could move these things out. How can I support you here? This is how I'd like you to sort of change and move around here. And what are you doing in yourself and your business and we're everywhere so that you can iron all those kinks out so you can figure what it is. And it's like, cool, if we have enough room and space, like have a, have a kid, regardless if you have kids or not, it's like, fuck yeah. Like good on you guys for growing and like. Right, it's so we have we have, we call it challenging conversations. We go we don't go oh we're arguing at the moment. We go we, we're having it's a challenging conversation because if you're not gonna discuss these things and communicate them, then it just it turns into this bottle up ne- this bottleneck and it just obviously it results in in unhappiness and and X Y Z. But yeah, so we do and we have them often and we I remember having them so often that Tim's like is this thing even working? Like are we just like. I'm like, no, I'm like, we are, we're getting stronger and stronger every second of every day and we're so headstrong. Well, I'm probably, I'm, I'm the, the problem, but <laughs> we're both, we're both super headstrong. So we both hold on to not resentment or frustration with each other, but we, when we have these conversations, we just, we do clash, but it's, it's that for, it's that growth that we've been able to have together, which is, makes us so understanding of each other. And it's really starting to show, especially now where we're we're in with each other, and um, that stuff's at home, and it's so nice to to share that with each other and share those problems with each other. Like I wouldn't want to be sharing it with anyone else. So yeah, as I say, yeah, you'd either be doing it with her, or you'd be doing it with someone else, regardless. <laughs> like that's going to be there with the lifestyle. Yeah, so. I'm, I'd yeah. rather her than my dog being emotional support. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. What comes? That's like she's more interactive. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm feeling a bit down, she doesn't bring me a slobbery teddy to, <laughs> to throw. So yeah, she's well, a bit she's more she's a bit more cuddly than that. So. <laughs> It's good though because it shows like commitment and commitment to growth. It's like, yeah, we're here, we're committed and we're like going to grow together for the hard and the, and the good. And you've got to grow together as well. Like as we've said before, like if your partner and as Teague, I'm lucky with my partner as well. Like if you're both not on the self-development route in a way, you aren't, you feel like you're outgrowing each other. Like it's sort of, you've got to grow together to expand. Like, so yeah, it's hard to be able to do it together, but it's easy in a way as well. Like you want to move together, but you need to take each other on the journey as well. Yeah, it's so, so true. Um, yeah, it's working with each other. Like if you outgrow each other, then that's where like... So if you outgrow each other? Yeah, so if you outgrow each other, that's like why you see like on bad as it sounds like divorce rates. Once the kids are moved out, they split up. Like so that's all... It's the only thing keeping them together. Literally yeah. like, and as Teague said, like what he's working on now 
and as you said, like you're gonna have kids and it's gonna be a breeze. Like I don't think it's gonna be a breeze, it's gonna have room for kids. Yeah, <laughs> it's like there's the next challenge you can Next like, challenge. We're but like, sorted, but you know like, how never. to like you know how to voice it, you know how to communicate it, you know what to talk about and what to come up of like how you're feeling. Like if you're feeling frustrated, if you're talking about it, so like it makes it easier in a way to be able to be on the same level and understand each other deeply. I think you can have the skills. Being vulnerable enough to talk about parenting styles or all that kind of thing. Like, uh, Tams and I are not even thinking about children, but like, we talk, we discuss parenting styles often and like disciplinary actions, the way that we would speak to our children, the way that we'd be on the same page with any decision, whether regardless whether we agreed about it or not, we wouldn't, you would don't discuss that in front of the child. You'd, you'd, you'd go when once you're in privacy, you'd, then you'd have discussion, be like, oh, I didn't really agree what you did here, blah, blah. But like, some people just aren't even, don't even align like that. And then they're rushing into marriage children. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's, life's not a race. You know, you're not here to like you're not to, you don't need to get to the finish line first. Like, if you don't understand that about someone else, why would you why would you go and then um, bring a life into the world with them? Yeah. I'm gonna, like it's it's important to grow together, yeah, but it's important to like understand each other on that next on that next level. Yeah, which is like can be real difficult sometimes. <laughs> Super, because <laughs> it takes a lot of work. So how do you guys think like? Working on yourself personally has helped you guys kick goals. How do you think that's like, how do you think working on yourself personally has helped you in your relationship and that it's helped you in business as well? Self-awareness for me is probably the big one. Yeah. Yeah. Like knowing who you're showing up as, as like Tig was saying, like the King Warrior Magician Lover, like you know who you're showing up as each day but you try to like manipulate them to the situation you're in, but you can realize who you're showing up. Like if I'm like, Oh, I'm working heaps again, like showing up in that warrior a hundred percent. Like if I'm not cuddling someone like, or if I am too cuddly, like, you know, like you're self aware of who you are and what you want to be as well. Like, and you should be able to judge the situation as well of like what the person and feel the vibrations of who the person is as well. Like, so yeah, I reckon like working on yourself, like it's everyone should do it, but because it's like it gives you skills and tools to be able to be the best version of yourself of who you want to be. I like you. I like to use it on others. So being obviously, the more I understand myself and the way that I'm acting, then understanding the way that someone's communicating with me, and what they're, what position they're in, what archetype they're portraying. That's that's where I find, I I find I can, not that I'm, I'm perfect or whatever, but anything, but I can control my my archetypes. And I understand which archetype I'm in. But what helps me the most is communication of what archetype that person's in and allowing then that like i i was having a challenge the other week at, uh, at the job um with a building manager and he you know was he was definitely in his in his warrior mode and he's like oh we need to do this we need to do this we need to do this and he's asking me he's like you even a plumber like you know he's, he's like throwing little shades at me and i just sat there and i was like oh i'll adopt my lover i'm just like oh yeah man yep yeah and i was just real soft with him i was just like yep no worries and i was there was a position where I'm like, no, mate, I'm wrong here. You know, you are right. That's over there. I just fed into his to make him feel because I knew that's that's the archetype he adopted, and that's what he wanted to be. And I was just like, yeah, mate, no worries. And like that, that allowed me to be softer with him instead of getting frustrated or angry with him, like throwing digs at me. I was able to just feed into that, and ultimately got the result at the end of the job, regardless whether I sat there and argued with him or I didn't. We ultimately got to the end goal of the of the, what we were there to solve. What did he say at the end? Did he like? Did he apologize or anything? Or no, no, he's stuck in his ego. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that holds no that yeah. holds no barrier over my day. Yeah. So which is you know doesn't doesn't worry me in the slightest. But it's it's just understanding what position he's coming. Like I could go into that and be like, why is he insulting me? Who does he think I am? And I can jump into my warrior. And then all we're going to do is throw shade at each other and it's, it's not going to result in any sort of product productivity. I love that, man, because it's sort of like you actually, that was like a gift that you gave to him without anything expecting in return. It's like, no, nah, I'm just going to love this guy even though he's like you know, in his thing and he's like raging and stuff. Like I can actually help him calm down without anything expecting in return. That is like those blessed people when you're in a rush in traffic and you're in the right-hand lane and then they move out of the way for you. And you're like, oh. You're the best. Oh my god, I love that person so much. That's sort of what you did, him. I just, I, yeah, and like it's, it's not something I'm, I've mastered at all. But like being able to just, just, just understand those archetypes in others more than myself helps me in in more ways than than that to just to interact and communicate. So yeah, being able, being able to understand it myself, but being able to implement that 
in my day to day life and work life is what's helped me the most. So crazy. Like just looking at that, like, no, it's just sort of reflecting what we've already talked about in a way. Everything comes back to communication. <laughs> oh, doesn't it, bro? Doesn't it? Every like we've both touched every on communication <laughs> 10 times. I'm like, the whole world, we're just going to communicate better and everyone will be happier. <laughs> everyone bottles everything up. Yeah. Or doesn't, doesn't say what they need to say. And like you were saying before, you're just like, sometimes like, yeah, if they take it rudely, they take it rudely. Like, bad yeah. luck. <laughs> Grow a thicker skin and be like, yeah, well, yeah, I'm, I was being a bit of a dickhead before. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. Like, and, and it's so, people are scared to offend or they're scared to put that out there and see what they get back. Nine times out of ten, you put it out there and someone will just be like, yeah, actually, yeah, true. Yeah, you're right. Like, this guy was, this guy was right. I was wrong before. So I was just like, yeah, sweet. And then he wasn't expecting me to be to say, yeah, mate, I'm wrong. He was expecting me to argue with him and tell him how right I was. So he was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I am right. <laughs> <laughs> but do you, do you know what I mean? Like if, if, you're, if you're willing to just dissolve and be like, yeah, nah, mate, you're right, true. And like that, that kind of stuff, people aren't willing to do that. They, they prefer to sit in that ego and be... No, 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 no. And they sit there and they follow an argument that ultimately leads to nothing because they knew they were wrong like 15 minutes ago, but they just continue with it. So, yeah, communication is paramount and it's something that is at the forefront of everything. I think feeling emotion too because the part there where it's like, okay, if you were wrong, whatever, it's like there could be a little bit embarrassed, a little bit of shame, a little bit of guilt, and then just like swallowing that for a second being like, oh, yeah, and then feeling those things and being like, Back to right. what you said before, I think feeling comfortable, yeah. feeling comfortable in yourself. Yeah. So like something that, that I've really been able to understand is being able to be comfortable in whatever archetype I'm adopting for that for that period of time. Because like I, you almost feel a bit, well, like when we first began our one-on-ones together, like I, you know, I, I did feel like uncomfortable. And then we did that exercise where you made me scream at my computer <laughs> and... <laughs> And just like to be seen, to be seen, and and like, and that helped me to see myself and understand that right, I am comfortable where I am. I, you know, this is the life I'm living. This is the human that I am. It's not this, um, it's not this mask that I'm, I'm, I'm faking or anything like that. So yeah, it's that's that's probably another one is just being comfortable, which allows you to do all of those things. Allows you to like to see others for for what they are adopting, and and to allows you to like ha- hold that space to communicate with people and and respond with respond with something that you genuinely want to respond back with not just with a, f- a void filler or a space filler so and that's how you become more authentic more authentic straight up like that is how you do it yeah we said that was fire i was like, that was like yeah. <laughs> but it is you just yeah it's, it's all about getting back true to yourself not not sitting there and being like oh i'm just gonna like i'm just gonna throw this out there because this is what the first thing that's come to my brain so yeah it's it's being able to just hold that space and be let your brain actually think and then allow that to yep. transfer. And what I find most of us do is we get so laser focused and we get so laser focused on one thing. Right? I don't know if it's a man thing or something, but we're like, yes, laser focus on one thing. And we're actually growing and things are growing and um, in our business things are growing and our relationship things are growing that we forget that externally in our world. It's like, oh, all this other growing has to come with us and we have to like allow it to happen, which is why I think some of the compliments and stuff like are difficult or maybe even something buying something for yourself that you love is difficult or sharing that on social media is difficult because it's like, oh, I've had these it's external realities here. I'm so used to being seen at this version of myself and I'm not seen in exactly. this version of myself. So when you are, it's like this huge sort of emotional release and there's like confidence come comes back in and then it's like, okay, now I can take the next step. Now I can get to the next level. Instead of focusing deep in here, I need to focus deep, sort of just pivot a little bit that way and start focusing on there. And Adopting that, the next level. Yeah, and that comes back to like, even like example, like when your partner asks you like, oh, let's do this next week. You're like, oh, I'm only thinking about tomorrow. Like, <laughs> and that's us. Like I'm, I'm, yeah. like, I'm, I'm like, like, I don't even know. 24 hours ahead, yeah. otherwise I can't handle it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, and but that's like the thing we say, like girls speak with emotions, males don't. Like girls are so much more emotional. Like you say like emotional the boys go, yeah, go somewhere. Like we'll just sit there and just like obviously now like the friendships we've got, we'll probably talk a bit more emotionally. But like you'll go to somewhere and a bunch of girls, they'll be talking about X, Y, Z. They'll be crying and laughing at each other. Us blokes are just standing there all like puffed out chest, <laughs> thinking we're all cool as, talking about how hard we've been working and work's been busy and this and that. Like it's so... And sometimes Crazy. it's good to have that bullshit. Yeah. Just it's almost the mindless conversation, but yeah. the mindless conversation that you need to have with your mates just to just to feel that like just to feel that dumb face. Yeah. Like a man. <laughs> yeah. you know, what are you talking about, T? I don't want to feel dumb, bro. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I like being intelligent. No, no, like but like 
<laughs> sometimes you just want to feel that like quick little stint of just being like it's validated yeah, yeah. yeah. just like allowing that silliness out yeah or just allowing that just to stand there and talk shit with them and, and yeah. let that just let that flow for a minute like obviously not not feed into them sitting there all day <laughs> just being like <laughs> but like sound like <laughs> sound like king kong again but like you just want to let that little part out of you because that's that that's that little section of of your friends that you hold on to that you kind of enjoy just that mind mindlessness um conversation where you're not having I wouldn't to even, I wouldn't show even say that it's someone. like um exactly mindlessness it's like it's it's just a it's just a form i think of just um you know communicating like again confirming beliefs about yourself but in a way that's good because people understand you you know what i mean it's a, it's it's a difference like if you go to someone at a coffee shop or and you're like oh i've been so busy and they're like good you know what i mean and i hate the word busy by the way like i hate i'm trying to remove it from like vocabulary but when you go into tell your friends and they know like what time you get up what you do there um how like the specific details that you do with work and when you go home and when you train and, you the and you're just like yeah. i've been busy and they're just like dude you know like, i get it and so they'll talk about something that yeah. you that you posted on on your business page or whatever and they're just like, oh yeah, I saw you were doing that. That's ma- that's that's hectic. Yeah. And you know that, th- yeah. and then that you know that conversation actually holds value because they've they yeah. see you, they see what you've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, know so exactly yes, I wouldn't think it's like mindless. The conversation it's, is. It's like um, yeah, mindless is probably the wrong word to use, but like <laughs> yeah. as in like it's just like it's not about being validated either, but it's about yeah. val- it's about just they understand you for who you are and what you do, and to be able to have that conversation with them where it's like. They understand everything. You don't have to like. You don't have to break everything down to them. There's not a new client where you've got to, you know, you've got to show up as, as this as this person that, um, and then feed into that kind of area that you you need to feed into. It's that part where you can just sit there with them and you can. Well, I suppose you can be comfortable around them. Yeah, yeah, for my, sure. My, mindlessness is probably, but it's where you can be mindless and just be comfortable around your friends and yeah. have that conversation. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, powerful. Yes. Well, we've talked about heaps on this podcast and what I like to do is challenge the listeners to do one thing after listening to this. So each from the conversations that we've had, I'd like to challenge all the listeners, one thing they can do today, tomorrow or something like that. What have you guys got? I'd, I'd say sit there and think about the hard conversation you need to have with someone and either call them, tell them or message them like right now and just say, I need to have a conversation with you or yeah, just send a voice memo, like book in that hard conversation to be have if it's a pay rise, if it's a family member that you haven't talked to for the last five years, like call them and tell them and then tell like um, another big thing I'm big on is like tell your friends you love them too. Like, so that's massive. So yeah, either like call a message or have the hard conversation or someone you want to always tell or like call them and tell them you love them. Yeah, you, do you still have that, like, all those gratitude cards? Yeah, yes, yeah, like, yeah. Tyler's got this gratitude card thing on his desk. It's great. It's just a packet of them. And, like, you pull one out every day and, like, send it to yeah, someone. Yeah, yeah, just change it up and send it to a few people and <laughs> feel that someone needs it. Or I'll even just send voice memos every now and then to people, like, tell them I'm proud of them. Like, and I get a kick out of that in a way of, like, I can help them as well. Like, I've sent a few to Teague. Like, I don't, like, sometimes you don't get a reply off people. You don't want, I don't want a reply. Like I just want them to have a listen. Go, oh fuck yeah, like cool. I was like, as he said, trust me, it's home, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, no, when you talk to your mates, like it's so cool because you're like, you don't need. I know I don't need to respond to you, like, yeah. and because like, because I'm 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 going in that morning, but to take five fifteen seconds, you stop, you read that message, and you just know someone else is thinking of you. It's so powerful. Like it's got it, your back, eh? And you're like, oh, it makes you feel, it makes you feel, um, makes you feel bulletproof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just like, you're just like, how good's that? Like, and I, I like. I'm I'm the worst. I like I like look at something, read it, and then put it down because I'm like I'm trying to do 15 things at once because I'm an idiot. But like, <laughs> and you, and you go, but it's just so nice to sit there and go, Fuck, yeah, that that's that's so nice. That, that's nice that he's thinking of me. Yeah, and to move on. But yeah, people people probably need to do that more, share the love more, yeah. have those conversations. My one would be. I reckon you could do it as well. I'd love to get a message from you. I'll send you a couple. Yeah. <laughs> something I've, it's Woo-hoo. actually something I've, I've adopted that Tyler's Tyler did it to me when I was I was going through some stuff over the last mo- month or so like work's just been just building up and building up building up and I've, I was getting messages off Tyler I was getting no replies at all and he was still sending me messages <laughs> and the persistence was what like ma- was what made me so inspired and I'm just like I need to I need to adopt this because that made me feel good I couldn't imagine what it makes other people feel like so but um, mine would be exactly what I was saying before I think you should research the archetypes from and and adopt try your best to adopt the interactions you're having with people and 
adopt what archetype they're having. So what, what, what position they're in, where they're coming from. A bit, I guess another way to say it is like put yourself in their shoes and, and then respond based on that information that you're getting fed back. It's a goddamn superpower. I think that would be – that's something that's, that has changed the game for me um, and it's something that I think others should, should – if, if you don't know much about it, just it takes 15 minutes, get onto Google, have a look, have a look at the archetypes. It's king, warrior, lover, magician. Go through them, read them, and then adopt that to like adopt that to your day to day conversation, and people will find a huge shift in their interaction. It's crazy because even listening to like you guys talk and like just know that you both completely understand it and have conversations around it is is crazy. I'm I'm stuck between two of them. <laughs> and I can't like I can't what figure ones? out my magician <laughs> or my king, but <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's something that it's something that just helped ch- help me to to interact day, on day, on day, the most simplest day to day conversations. What archetypes are yours? I bounce between warrior and lover. Nice. And you push me into my king energy, but I haven't quite <laughs> cracked it yet. Well, the king's always <laughs> always there, um, regardless, and that is either where you're being a bit of a tyrant and being really demanding. Or you're sort of slipping back on your boundaries a little bit. Do you notice that anywhere? Yeah, yeah, I do. I I often slip back on boundaries, but it's to, to take on. I'll put a barrier and be like, right, this is all I need to do today, and I'll take more on, mm. and 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 ultimately it becomes counterproductive. Um, but I it's that's just that's just something that obviously I need to make a. Much stronger barrier. <laughs> 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 Boundaries. <laughs> like, how, how, how could you get the Great Wall of China across that? <laughs> make, make it strong and stick to it. But um, well, how could you? How could you make them stronger? Be more accountable to myself, and like leave leave work harder on leaving that space free, which is something that yeah, something that I don't always nail. How. How could you keep yourself more accountable? So I'm poking here. Send you more voice notes so you can Ooh, that's get one. at me more. <laughs> <laughs> Send more voice notes. That's good. How else? Um, I need to. I need to start journaling more. I need to start getting the thoughts that are inside my brain out out of my brain, and I can go back over them because I think that's what I can. S- I can be quite negative to myself and be like, fucking hell, you're fucking up here. You're not, you're not showing up here. You should be doing this more. You should be doing here more. You should be doing that more. And um, I think I need to get those thoughts out, read them back, understand how negative they are, and then, then they'll help me to shift my, my thought patterns and processes. I think that's going to make me more productive and honest with myself. Have you got time to do that though? Not, no, no, nah, because I keep filling up with silly stuff. What do you feel like? I set you a challenge. I set you a challenge. Then, like one thing I do is sometimes in the morning, first thing, literally as I wake up, I have like a notepad in my bathroom to- at times, and my first thought I write on that bit of paper as I'm like, even if I'm half asleep, and, and it's literally ninety percent of the time it's negative. Really? Yeah, oh. yeah. Like I'll write something or think of something like, oh, just go back to bed. Oh, no, nah, you don't deserve today. Like, so, but then like yeah. Integrate that into be positive, so or you understand that yeah. So like whatever, just a thought. yeah. Like it, it comes up, like say, oh, I need to go back to bed. I'm so tired. I'm fucking working too hard. Like, so then you try integrate that into a positive. So like I'll write it down at times, or like type it out, or do something. But like then you think of way that can be a positive trait. So it makes you conscious. It makes you conscious. Yeah. So you then conscious you're self aware because your, your thoughts. We all know thoughts become things, right? But. If the morning is such a, I I I can relate to that. Like yeah. the, your morning is so challenging at times, yeah. and it is often a negative, a very negative space. Yeah. Not for me, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're different. I said, I said, yeah. If I, if I wake up in the morning, I'm like, fuck yeah. <laughs> Sometimes like I'll chill here for a minute, like let's get going straight to the gym. Um. That's interesting though, because like this is like a real, a real good topic, and we'll, we'll stay for like five more minutes, and then we'll I'm close on the podcast. But um, in terms of like keeping boundaries, because you have to have like discipline, grit, and like motivation to be able to like hold a boundary and put it in there and like keep it consistently. So, like, I want to get clear on this. Like, T, how how could you do it instead of going over? Like, what's what's the shift? 
Did you you make me think hard here? Um, it'd be the it, it once again it'd be like to to impress my. I need to like figure out what what drives me, what makes me happy, and like and then that's where I need to then implement that into come up with an exercise that helps me to implement that to make me proud of myself. So I need to obviously I, I'm always self proving. I need to always prove something to myself. So. I need to come up with a way that setting those boundaries and sticking sticking to them will make me Im- impressed with myself. So I'm picking on TK right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, help me pick on him here. Yeah. Um, so you've just mentioned a few times, because I was like asking you in real time, like what can you actually do? Mm. And then you said, I need, I need, I need, I need to do this like five or six times, which is like not committing. And saying I need to do this instead of talking I am going to do this or this is what I'm going to do specifically, then the word need prevents you from committing. So I'll ask the question again. <laughs> How are you going to stick to your boundaries? I'm going to come up with an exercise. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's sort of navigating it again. Like, I'm yeah. going to. Like, what is it? How, how are you going to stick to your boundaries? I'm implementing an exercise. Communication? Communication for one, yeah. um, exactly. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I need to better. You just said I need. I need. I need. Notice, notice that. Notice that because that that's cool, right? That we sort of like come to that point because you keep saying I need. I need, which is like if you were to prove yourself to someone, as you mentioned, like you already said it. To prove yourself is always like, oh, I need to do this thing to prove to this person. So it's like this narrative and this story that is like in your mind all the time that's like i need and i think it's literally this i need thing which is stopping you from having the boundaries because you put in a boundary then you go actually i need to do that that's so true (laughs) and that's the workaholic trait (laughs) like the workaholic trait that we've both got like we always need more and it's like always of the fact of like what's next there's no no there's no satisfaction satisfaction for ourselves as well as like tiga said before like the negative self-talk we probably give to ourselves is why we are like we are because we always feel like we don't have to prove anyone else. We've got to prove ourselves. Right? That's your motivation. Yeah. But yeah, you yeah. don't, you don't push yourself. Like, you don't pat yourself on your back. I'm like, I've never, like, <laughs> like, yeah, you don't <laughs> like get settled in, boys. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you don't pat yourself on the back enough. Like, and it's hard to do because then you feel like you're like you don't deserve it because you haven't like you're always worried. Oh, I could have done more. Yes, like. But the same <laughs> thing, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> same thing is like T keeps saying, like I need, I need, I need. It's because that's how we are. Like it's literally fucking ingrained into our like probably psychologist, like the psychology of like our brains. Like that's how we get our dopamine here in a way of like we need, we need, we need. Like it's like a drug to us. Like that's all we think. Like when he's saying I need, that's him saying, all right, I'll do this. Hopefully it works. And it gives me the dopamine hit I think I'm going to get. <laughs> Nailed it. So here's an exercise. I'd like both of you guys to do this. Oh no. <laughs> Why don't I bring said, myself said, into this? He said pick on me and you just jumped, you jumped straight on my ship. You're like, oh, I'm going to sail with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we are. We're both like tarred from the same brush. Like yeah. we're fucking do the same shit. Like Our walk uh, around that lake together when we first met each other, we went for a walk. And I was like, I'd be like, oh, this and this and this. And Tyler would be like, me too. And he'd be like, and this and this and this. And I'll be like, me too. And it's just like, <laughs> bro, literally like we're looking in the mirror. Dude, it's crazy. It's crazy <laughs> even coaching both of you guys because it's like, oh my God. It's just like, but it's a different approach because you guys have different personalities. Um, but it's like, yeah, the same thing. as like, how can we move, move the same thing? So as you mentioned before, and the nail on the head, it's like, oh, we don't actually pat ourselves on the back. No. So there's a moment on there where it's like, okay, I'm going to keep saying yes because I don't feel that I have done good enough. Enough. And w- until I've had the moment where I've said like, oh, I really appreciate myself. I acknowledge myself. Like like today for these things, I have done enough. And if I do any more, I'm self-sabotaging and that's going to prevent me, as you mentioned. Oh, I'm only focusing on what tomorrow. It's like, well, what if you actually started focusing on 10, 20 years from now? And then what you're going to build out? Because if you're focused on tomorrow, you're going to ha- keep coming up with tomorrow problems. And then it's going to be 10 years tomorrow. And you go, fuck, right? Nothing's changed. Maybe a little bit has. But until that mindset shifted, it's like, you know, I got told this recently of someone, because I'd go monthly, monthly box and six monthly. And one of my mentors was like, get your fucking head out of your ass and start to- thinking a year, five, ten years from now, all the time. 
was like, fuck, I needed to hear that. It's daunting, isn't so, it? Right, yeah. So, like, for you guys, I like this, like, like you guys to try this too, like, on live on here. Really get present. And the reason of this is the whole not good enough, need to prove myself. It's, a, it's like a prevention of actually being present in the moment and acknowledge yourself for what you're doing. So I'd like you to like do an exercise where you're just like, I think I've done so well and so good with this and I acknowledge myself for this and I'm really proud of X, Y, Z. And just really just taking a moment to celebrate and acknowledge yourself right now for like a minute or two and just like see what comes up. Who wants to go first? See, like, I'm going to, like, not beat around the bush, but, like, it's <laughs> uncomfortable because, like, we don't want to pat ourselves on the back. Yeah, it's like, super uncomfortable. I, I'm cringing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, totally, totally, I'm like, <laughs> yeah. 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 And yeah. ego in a way of, like, you don't want to feel arrogant, but it's like, the, you see, like, or, you like, when you listen to a few, like, people, like, where we are now, five years ago, I wouldn't imagine where I am now. Like, so... Well, you've even been at the forefront of your mind, would it? No. Like, like, you no, wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to picture it. No. Like, nah. So it's like you should pat yourself on the back, but we just don't. Yeah, let's do it right now. You're going to give yourself a pat on the back and you're going to give yourself a pat on the back. Who's going first? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's all we have to do. Yeah, that's it. Done. <laughs> that's done. <laughs> For a minute or two? Or <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm watch. Just, just start rubbing my back. Yeah. <laughs> give myself a massage. I'm happy. <laughs> all right. Tig's in first. <laughs> He's like, he locked in. Tig was like, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. Just acknowledge yourself, bro. I'm grounding man. myself. Why are you proud of yourself, and wh- how are you acknowledge yourself? And I want to hear. I want to hear how you acknowledge yourself, and why are you proud of yourself. I'm I'm super proud of of what I've been able to achieve from a place of not not expecting anything of myself. So I I, I never expected I'll get to the position I'm in. Which is what? Like I'd like you to get real detailed. The, the position I am. What is that position that you're in? Because oh, and I've achieved these things. So like, I've been able, I've been able to scale my business over this is about fourth year now. So, so coming into our fourth year, I've been able to scale my business from a, a run of the mill business to a we're getting close to reaching a seven figure total for this year, and that puts me that's that's been a goal of mine for an extremely long time. And I remember I I used to sit at my kitchen desk, kitchen bench, and Mum would be like. She's like, what do you want to do? What's what do you want to do? I'm like, I'm be a millionaire by the time I'm thirty, and she's just like, oh yeah, 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 yep, I 100 percent agree. And it was always this like, this loud joke, like just like, yeah, yeah, I, I agree with you, I agree with you. And it was always just this brush off thing, and it used to like, I don't know, that just lit this absolute fire in me. And it's only been recently where she's just like, she's just like, I'm keeping tabs, millionaire by the time you're thirty now, cause like, because it's 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 become a reality, and um. So that's something I'm super proud of. Being able to like create an environment is something I'm so proud of. What I like, the guys, the my part, the members of my team are, are older than me, and the fact that I can provide them with an environment that they haven't seen before and that they enjoy makes me super proud. Um, the fact that I can have the ability to employ you and. Someone asked me the other day, just like, oh, how much that cost? I'm like, oh, I can't remember, mate, but I'd pay it twice over. Like, it, it's the, the, the ability to, like, to develop myself is something I'm super proud of and the ability to attract the people into my life that are here right now. Um, my inner circle is something that I'm super proud of that I've been able to achieve and attract other human beings that are like-minded, want to be around me. There's always this like this thought or this feeling I had as a child that like my friends weren't actually my friends or the groups I didn't never really belong to and that kind of stuff. And now I, I I don't have that feeling at all. And if I do ever have that feeling, I just leave. Like it's just it's just something that I'm I'm super grateful for and proud of that I've been able to put myself in this position and it's all it's all worked out for me in the end. Just to add on to that, it's like why are you worthy? Why am I worthy? Jeez, this feeds back into the cringe moment. Um, why am I worthy? Give me a give me a topic to start on. Just you gonna go from here, not from here. <laughs> <laughs> this is like oh, do, 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 do. yeah, yeah. Um, like why? Yeah, my heart's in my head right now. Like taking breath from your nose. Breath from your mouth. Just think here. Why are you worthy? 
I'm worthy of this because I put in, I put in what I get out, and I, I really always drive for, for the best for others, and it's so nice to have it come back onto me, and it's a byproduct. It's it's all an energy like I put out, and I always try to do the best for other people. And it Hold on a second. <laughs> Press it, I'll let you know. Yep. And it hasn't always um geez, I fucking lost my train of thought. For other people. Yeah, I've always tried to do the best for other people and it may not always seem like that to others, but in my head I always felt like I've been always trying to tr- to do the best. And I always felt well, I never realised because I was never t- aware of myself, but especially recently I've always felt like maybe the, the best wasn't coming back to me and I just wasn't aligning with the right people and the right people weren't in my inner sanctum and in my inner circle. So, you know, to be in the position that I am where those people are there for me and they're there to be there for me and um, it's what I'm putting out is coming back to me, you know, that makes me feel, that makes me feel satisfied, that makes me feel worthy, that makes me feel amazing. Fuck yeah. I love that. Tyler, wait. It's hard to back up. (laughs) I'm like thinking, I'm like, (laughs) we're the same, bro. He's just taking my words. Just copy and paste his. (laughs) You're funny because you were looking at Tino as Tino was talking. You were smiling. I look at face, you're like, fuck. (laughs) 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 He said we're the same. (laughs) Tyler, why are you you proud and why are you worthy? Shall we wait? Yeah, we'll wait a second. He's about to pee mm. his pants, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly there. I love Teague, though. What an energy. What a man. Huh? What a man. What a man. What an energy. <sighs> nice. Nice. Mm. Well, I'm excited for dinner tonight. Yeah, yummy. What time? Probably, if it takes like an hour. Yeah. It takes about an hour to get there. 50 minutes 50 yeah. minutes Yeah about an hour uh, So probably just like Before five Yep mm, Yeah that'll give me time Get a run in this morning This afternoon Jeez Yep About f- 4.30 we'll say 5 o'clock All right, Yep Anywhere around there mm-hmm. Should be good Yeah I've got some I feel it Oh Nice mm. Can you hear some cows mm. Yeah That's what dinner is I feel it <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like some half fillet. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, he's back. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. Tyler, why are you proud and why are you worthy? It's hard to back up from what, what's just been said, <laughs> but um, I'm proud of myself because of like the determination, the grit I've probably had, which is bad, but it's good in a way to get what I've wanted to get. Um, and now I've learned working on myself has made me super proud to be able to realise who I have shown up as the past and as present um, and just showing up as the best partner I can be as well um, to my fiance as well. Like it's just being able to, and I'm super proud of that and being able to do the things I want to do instead of being judged by others. Um, so yeah, I'm proud of that and working through stuff when it does get hard I would be proud of as well of like having those hard conversations and going over those hurdles in life as well um, to be able to just do it and not worry about sort of not worry about the consequence but be proud and confident in what I say as well mm. yeah. oh, Jesus just hit the mic on my face <laughs> and then why are you worthy I reckon I'm worthy because I I realize now I probably gave out too much and filled everyone else's glass before I feel feel my own always and probably still do here and there but now that's why I reckon I'm worthy now because I've gave out so much I probably should receive other people's gift as well as what they'll be able to give me and help me with so yeah I reckon I'm worthy to be able to receive it now and accept what I've probably been trying to be given but now I've finally realized the self-awareness of what I am worthy of and that myself is limitless in a way of what I can receive that is beautiful well thanks for coming on to the podcast guys no thanks for having us thanks for being here (laughs) (laughs) that's it done oh yeah